Okay, class, now we're going to move on to muscles that move the, the wrist and or the fingers, the digits. So just to recap, this is the anterior part of the arm. We've already done the anterior uh, muscles that move the elbow, the biceps brachii, the brachialis that's just deep to it, and the brachioradialis. So we're going to get rid of those muscles and look at our muscles we're going to be um, studying today. So we've gotten rid of our elbow flexors. So now we're going to be looking at these four muscles right here in the front. They all have their origin at the medial epicondyle of the humerus. There's four of them. The first is pronator teres. The next one is flexor carpi radialis. And then we're going to have this one, palmaris longus. And then this last one is flexor carpi ulnaris. So let's start with pronator teres. Now the name pronator tells you what? it tells you its action. It is a pronator. Remember, pronation and supination of the forearm. So let's look at pronator teres. So here's pronator teres isolated. Its origin at the medial epicondyle of the humerus, and its insertion is going to be here on the radius. So when it contracts, I to O, it's going to be pulling the radius. It's actually going to be rotating the head of the radius around that radial notch of the ulna to give us pronation. So let's just see that in action. So here we can see the forearm being pronated. Pronation, remember turning it over. We're getting our uh, the radial head is rotating in that ulnar notch, rotational synovial joint right there. Pretty easy, right? So the first muscle, the pronator teres, it's telling you what it's doing. It's the pronator. The next three muscles are all going to be flexors of the wrist joint. Basically what you know, need to know about these guys, here is the flexor carpi radialis. Just know that its origin is that medial epicondyle. It's coming across the forearm and it's going onto the radial side. It's actually crossing, crossing the wrist joint and it's going to be inserting into metacarpals two and three. So all you really need to know is it's crossing the wrist joint and when it contracts, I to O, it's going to cause wrist flexion. The next muscle, palmaris longus. Now this is also originating up here at the medial epicondyle. Now the interesting thing about palmaris longus, it is actually absent in about 14% oh, of the population. So let me show you something about the palmaris longus. So if you are looking at the palm of the hand, now this palmaris longus, it has this long, thin tendon, and it's not, it's, it's actually, its insertion is in the aponeurosis of the palm. So not really going into any real bones, but the aponeurosis of the palm. And let me show you this. If you do this on yourself, go ahead and put your, your hand up, like just like this picture, and pinch your thumb to your little pinky and squeeze. If you have the palmaris longus, you will see it pop up right here. This tendon right here, this is the flexor carpi radialis. This is on the, the radial side. So if you don't have this, 
it means you're one of the 14% that doesn't have the palmaris longus. So palmaris longus, originating from that medial epicondyle, it's slender with this long tendon that's going into the aponeurosis of the hand. It is a very weak flexor of the wrist. And the last muscle coming from the medial epicondyle is going to be the flexor carpi ulnaris on that ulnar side of the forearm and crossing the wrist. So let's isolate this guy. So this is flexor carpi ulnaris. It's also originating from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and insertion is down in through here on the ulnar side. This is the ulna crossing the wrist joint. So this will be your other wrist flexor. So here is showing you flexion of the wrist. The muscles that you need to know for wrist flexion are going to be flexor carpi radialis on the radial side, thumb side, flexor carpi ulnaris on the ulnar side, and the, the palmaris longus, which is a very weak wrist flexor. flexor. In class, this is what we have you do. And if you can do it while you're looking at this video, go ahead and get your right forearm, cup your elbow with your thumb, and that is going to be your medial epicondyle. And then wrap around your four digits here. One, two, three, four, and they are basically showing you the direction and location of those four muscles that come from the medial epicondyle. Pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis on the rate pointing towards the radial side, the thumb side, palmaris longus going into the palm of your hand in that aponeurosis, and flexor carpi ulnaris on the ulnar side. PFPF. That's those are the muscles. PFPF. Okay, so now we have done the muscles of the anterior arm. Remember the biceps brachii, brachialis, brachioradialis were all elbow flexors. And the ones we just did down in the forearm, these are wrist flexors. So the anterior arm, think of it as your flexors. Now on the posterior side, the posterior muscles, triceps brachii was an extender of the elbow. And now we're going to look at the extenders of the wrist and digits. So I've removed the triceps brachii, the biceps brachii, and the brachialis just so we can get a better, better view of this area that we're going to be looking at now. So we are going to be locating four muscles that are coming from this lateral epicondyle. Now, in the classroom, I leave on the brachioradialis. Remember the brachioradialis is this anterior muscle. It's the lateral muscle on the anterior side. That is a good landmark to find our first muscle on the back side because it can be confusing to find. So once you've located the brachioradialis, the next muscle just lateral to it is going to be this muscle, extensor carpi radialis longus. Extensor carpi is extending the wrist and it's on the radial side and it's the long one. 
right next to it is going to be extensor carpi radialis brevis. Brevis means it's a little bit shorter. And then if we look back here, we are going to find extensor digitorum. This is going into the, the digits, digits two, three, four, and five, extending those digits. And our last muscle from the lateral epicondyle is going to be extensor carpi ulnaris. So now we're looking at our wrist extenders. So here's flexion. We've already done the wrist flex flexors. Those are on the anterior arm. On the posterior arm, we have our wrist extenders right there. So we have extensor carpi ulnaris on the ulnar side. We have extensor digitorum, which is extending the wrist and also extending those digits. And then we have extensor carpi radialis brevis. And we have extensor carpi radialis longus. So the muscles for wrist flexion, those are going to be antagonist to the muscles that give us wrist extension. Opposite sides of the forearm, opposite actions at the wrist. And here is just showing you extensor digitorum, just showing you extension of the digits. Flexion, and here's extension of the digits, extensor digitorum. So recap, on your anterior forearm, you have pronator teres. Action, pronation. Then you have your flexor carpi radialis muscle going to the thumb side, the radial side. You have palmaris longus. That is the, the muscle that is its tendon is going into the palm, the aponeurosis of the palm. And then you have flexor carpi ulnaris. So these four muscles all come from the medial epicondyle. Make sure you have on your, your list, the flex, flexors of the wrist are going to be flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. On the back side, you have your extenders. You have extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, brevis because it's a little bit shorter than longus, extensor digitorum, easy to see. Its ex insertion tendons are going into your digits. And your last wrist extensor is extensor carpi ulnaris. So make sure you have these muscles written down in your action worksheets. We are all done with the muscles of the arm. Next, we'll be looking at the muscles that act on the hip joint.